Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. John Goulet joining us here today, our chief researcher from Looking Back from beautiful Virginia. Him and his wife, uh, really, they started this amazing business a few years ago. It's called lookingback.net, and they're going to help you with your genealogy and so much more. John, I'll have you do the honors and and say hello today. Go ahead. Hello, everybody. It's uh A beautiful day where I'm at for this time of the year, getting about 62 degrees outside today, which is kind of comfortable after the cold nights. But uh, otherwise, Matt, we're we're doing good. Uh, I'm John Goulet, and uh, I'm the founder and chief runner for uh, Looking Back with the help of my wife, who is unable to be with us today. Yes, and we wish her the best. So. Uh, that's where we're at. And, uh, well, now we, we've met, uh, we've got to meet a few times already to talk about your background. Uh, and just for new listeners today, give us a quick recap of uh, the work you're doing, why you're doing it, I should say, before we continue to get into specifics about how you can help. Right. Well, that's why we're here is to help people that are interested in their own genealogy. Yeah. And we'll work with them any way we can to make it work uh, and help them. You know, if they need help or even advice, we're we're glad at even giving advice to people. Uh, and you know, advice not is not cheap, but I'm not going to charge you too much for just advice if you need some help. But uh, we are interested in helping uh, helping out. I started in this back actually in around 1996, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Having a problem, as, as I said, the last name is Goulet, that I spell it G-O-U-L-A-I-T. And for years, I wondered, well, are we related to the G-O-U-L-E-T people? Ah, good point. Yeah. And uh, it it's where I started, but it took me a long while uh, to get going, really going with it. Uh, because uh, at that time, we didn't have a lot of the testing that they do now for yeah. DNA. Mm-hmm. And if, especially the autosumo t- testing where you can match people real quick. So when I started, I had to uh, do my male Y DNA, uh, it, which is the, the male side. And finally, after about six years of waiting, when I did that, and this was back in about 2006 that I finally got to do that. Uh, around 2012, I found my first match. And what was uh, ironic about that, he had a different last name. But what happened, he was a product of a marriage. Well, not a marriage, but a, a, a one of those unforeseen incidents that people have. <laughs> and his father uh, was the product of it. And... Uh, their last name was actually, they went by the name of Guler instead of Goulet. Oh, okay. There were a lot of names changed. I'll get into that in a little bit later. But uh, anyway, his name was another name completely to that, but he was adopted by uh, the fellow that married his mother. And uh, that's when I knew that I was in the Goulet line. Yeah. Then after that, it was taking me a long time because I hit a brick wall uh, after my uh, second great grandfather, uh, or my yeah, well, my first great grandfather and my grandfather first great, but my second great grandfather, I just got hung up on. I uh, couldn't find anything out. And, uh, when they got into uh, auto sumo, it took a little while there because there weren't a lot of tests. Now everybody gets a lot of testing. That's when you start getting some matches. Mm-hmm. And out of that, I could. Uh, learning more about it, I could do what they do, try try triangulate on getting the information. And that's where I found out where my second great grandfather was. And the that way I knew what uh, limb I was on in the Goulet line. And uh, could trace, uh, I traced all, my line all the way back to the first entrance in uh, New New France, in fact, the Goulet, uh, Jacques Goulet was his name, was the first man to come over with his wife, and that was in the uh, 1630s. And he's considered a founding father of uh, New France. So 
we're like we're like the founding people down here near where I live that came to Jamestown and all that. And uh, actually, some of my tracing I got back to one uh, gentleman that came over in uh, 1615. Uh, he brought came up on a boat over and uh, with uh, whoever was coming over at that time. I can't quite remember, but anyway, uh, he stayed and married a woman, and I traced her line as part of mine back off part of it, and uh, so that uh, there I was. So we've been around here a long time, yeah. and uh, it's it's been an interesting, uh, a lot of fun, and it's so much fun, I want to do more of it, and Aww. hope that I can help people doing that. Aww. So uh, that uh, we don't... Uh, have been any problems with that uh, because like Kathy and I said, we do want to help and uh, just uh, let people know that uh, with on that uh, also that they they uh, will have reasons that they want to know their family and their family history. It could be for a lot of things as uh, Kathy has mentioned, I've mentioned before, whether it's for health reasons, for just wanting to know uh, a lot of it to know the the good and the bad. You'll you'll find that most families there's the good side and the bad side. In fact, when I mentioned that the family, the tree that I came up was a one of the I won't say bad side, but they were uh, voyagers. They were the original voyagers for trapping fur and all of that. Uh, my first. Uh, Grandfather in the, uh, was in the uh, oh, John, you're going crazy. Duran line that was was the woman that married to my second great grandfather. Uh, her name was Marie Genevieve, mm -hmm. and traced her all the way back to uh, the, her first relative that was over here, which was a uh, another Durand, and he in fact married a uh, native girl. Mm -hmm. uh, Risley, he came over for what uh, they called to become here and meet up and marry one of the what they called uh, uh, the oh boy, my mind's going to look crazy this morning. That's being tired. <laughs> but, uh -huh. uh, 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 they were the daughters of the king uh, or the uh, uh, Dile de, de Roy, daughters of the kings, and he shipped them over to get women here to start getting an increase in uh, marriages and uh, families. Mm -hmm. And I have, and again, that's another thing in my line with all of going through the whole line all the way that I could uh, with all the off branches. I have about six Dile de Roy that were in my relationships and of course a few famous people too that uh, have come up through time and that was a Goulet name or uh, or a name that uh, we have found out we what we say in the group that I work with with the French people or French Canadians is uh, that if you started as early as we did you are related to about three quarters of the French <laughs> people in Canada. And it seems wow. to be almost true. It, it just, it's really unbelievable. Amazing. Uh, yeah. As uh, people always ask me, are you related to Robert that remember Robert Goulet? And uh, I can truthfully say I am. He's about a, I think it's a sixth cousin, uh, about uh, six times removed. So it, it it's uh, kind of a good thing. Yeah. And then uh, I have the pleasure of knowing that I'm related to uh, 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 Celine De Rolla, uh, the Yeah, Celine. What is her name? Boy, I, I am Celine Luke, Dion. Yeah, Celine Dion. And uh, another one is. Uh, oh, this is terrible. Don't don't worry about it. But I'll get it. It's not, it's not really that important, and it's name dropping anyway. I don't need to do that. But uh, it's it's really been uh, an interesting journey, uh, and a, a real 
entertaining to read because as I said, going through my line itself, especially from my second grandfather, second great grandfather and his wife, uh, that whole side seems to be a little bit of uh, maybe the, I will, I will say the, uh, some black sheep are in there <laughs> that we have. And uh, in fact, uh, what caused a lot of problem for me, even with my great grandfather, uh, when I was doing this, I could never find his birth mm -hmm. on paper. But there was a birth of a fellow that uh, was born in the same year by the same family that uh, all my tracing goes through uh, that was born by the name of Dio Mead. And I found his birth. Uh, again, here's the name thing. It was yeah. his name was Dio Mead, but the, the, another name for Goulet at that time was Goulet, G O U L A I. -S, okay. Which really gets into everything. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me, I, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just have to let it go today. I meant That's to have okay. it. Muted. Muted. Don't worry. It happens Happens to me sometimes too, being the host, right? I'm in touch with work all day. I tell them, make <laughs> Any, sure the anyway, shows go good. Well, we're, we're it's true. all right. Go <laughs> no. ahead. It's real life. But anyway, Don't worry about it. Anyway, Goulet, uh, Goulet, it was pronounced Goulet though, uh, was uh, born in the same year as my grandfather. And with all the uh, matches I have going through the Goulet line and then through her Duran line, uh, that was a good bet that that was him. So I bet through that I'm saying that he changed his name to a Joseph Henry uh, mm -hmm. when he came, uh, got into somewhere around Sarnia in Canada. Uh, this is the first time I really found paper on him. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a long trace, and that was uh, when he was married, moved to Sarnia with his wife, and uh, started having a family. My grandfather was born over there. My dad was first generation, and I'm the following. So it's been a been a nice road uh, uh, and interesting. And there's a lot of things I can do to help people there, uh, and 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 a lot with anything. Uh, in genealogy, I've met a lot of friends from overseas. Mm -hmm. I also have uh, my maternal side, and my mother was German uh, and full-blooded. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting is for so long, uh, I couldn't find a lot of information on my grandfather, otherwise knowing that he came here in uh, uh, 1891. Okay. And, and cleared through, uh, it wasn't Ellis Island then, but through a, in New York. But anyway, he went and he homesteaded out in uh, North Carolina, North Dakota uh, when he first came in and uh, had his first two children there. Uh, but he didn't finish his homesteading. He fell in love and met a woman, I guess, by the name of uh, Dickhoff and Louise married her and they had uh, five more kids and they he ended up in Superior, Wisconsin. But it took me uh, actually a while to find out. Uh, he was not born, he was born in Prussia. Okay. It, it had just turned to Prussia when he was born in uh, the late uh, 70, 1871. Before that, it was Polish or Russian uh, area. And it was way over actually where in where Poland is now, where Prussia went. So uh, it was uh, a little bit of a search to finally hit his uh, his father. So I've got his second, my second great grandfather there. I'm deadheading now off of that and working on that. Uh, hers, his, uh, my grandfather, great grandfather. Let's get this straight. Now, my grandfather's, when he came over, his father uh, came over before him, but when he came over, his mother came over with him, but she passed on the ship and was buried at sea. So mm -hmm. it's some of the stories that you find are really uh, interesting and entertaining, and yet uh, they make for good stories. Uh, there's 
a lot of good stories out there and uh, people that want to know about them, we can help get them some of their history. Because that's what it is. It's family history. It's to us, it's family history. We call it genealogy, but it's a family history. Aww. Well, it's amazing the work you're doing and how you're helping people connect. Uh, we do have to remind everyone, uh, John, how we can reach out to you for a consultation if someone's interested. Well, first of all, you can always get me by email by going to J G O U L A I T at looking back dot net and also you can call me at area code 804-445-9681 and uh we'll answer the phone and talk to you no oh, that's wonderful and, and, and that's uh the best way i can say it if we're if we're here or not busy we answer the phone if not you can leave us a message and i guarantee we'll get back to you I think you will. Absolutely. Uh, glad that we're connecting here and uh, here again today. So clearly you're passionate about helping others find their genealogy, find their family history, ancestry. Let me just ask you, I mean, wouldn't it be wise if we just make a public service announcement here today? People, talk to your family members uh, and oh, not not well, to be not 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 to not to single out the older folk in the family, but yes, those are the older people. They should start writing things down. Ask them to write down whether it's oh, in gosh, hand, yes, that's... a journal, where you're born, where you're from, your grandparents. Like you have it. Like unfortunately, my mom passed away six years ago now. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Oh my gosh, yeah, it is six years ago uh, next month, and I don't have that. I wish you would have wrote everything down for me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> her family history and I, I contacted her sister who hasn't gotten back to me but like I'd rather heard it from my mom and have this in hand it's so important if you could just start documenting it save it in a draft write it in a handwritten letter or or put it in an email or type it up something and leave it with those yeah. in put your it, family put it, put it what what is nice in the earlier days if you can find it are the family bibles Ooh. because in the old days they used to keep the family that's how I found out actually uh my grandfather's uh when he came over he filled some papers out but he had the family bible and i finally ran across that uh about i think it was four or five years ago we found uh again things that happened strange in the family uh and uh i had a woman call me uh i had seen the name on somebody that i was related to and they said second cousin and I, I couldn't figure it out because it was completely different than, than my mother's maiden name, which was Wenzel. Uh, but uh, she called me and we started talking and he was uh, he was a product of a uh, Christ, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, he was part of the family and uh, we got it all straightened out. We, I went up and met him in uh, northern Wisconsin, where most of my wow. family was from. Uh, my mother's side was from and we got to know one another his wife is a character and mm -hmm. they are just nice people and uh but these are things that happen that uh on, i won't say unfortunately but the particular part of the family that was involved uh had three uh well she had three children two of which uh is again this is a weird thing and it sounds weird to begin with but her my mother uh was sisters and it was her sister's daughter that had these children mm -hmm. and my first cousin was uh well his second cousin was married to First cousin once removed was married. Oh, that gets me so confused, but I, I, I will be married, married, married to my father's brother. Okay. <laughs> so it was all this, it was goofy that it, it's like, I think they call it, uh, in that case, uh, it, it's uh, something second cousin. Uh, I just read it the other day because I had never heard of it before, but mm -hmm. it's, it's uh it is something else uh, but anyway uh we've had that happen and i it was always it, it's funny but that that will happen in uh, families uh, that you'll find uh, a few of these strange things that come along it's not unusual one thing about the canadian side that was so english uh, so crazy that we 
and I learned about realizing is a lot of the uh, gentlemen that were in the uh, business of being voyagers had two wives. <laughs> they had a summer wife and a winter wife. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and that also there was done, a little bit of a donomy, uh, a, a donomy, something like that, but uh, marriage of second and third cousins that went, that went on uh, at that time because there weren't a lot of women mm -hmm. and the church would make exception in some cases. Wow. Because the wow. Catholic church was, uh, that's, that's the thing that made Canada, uh, researching in Canada a lot better than you would think is, but the church kept great records. If you if they had them, some of them are, you know, a little bad, but most of them are pretty good all the way out from when they came in. So you've got pretty good records to go through. Uh, it's just getting the right name and that, as I said, Goulet. Uh, I have Goulets, I have Goulettis, <laughs> I have Goulers, as I said, I have uh, Goulds. Goals. A lot of people change their name mm -hmm. uh, when they came into the States, especially because at that time, the uh, French Canadians weren't very well accepted. It's like any group that comes in the first time around there. They're usually not too accepted within the, the group. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them did change their name and it did help. So, I mean, you know, it's things you have to do. I'm proud of my name. Uh, but I just, it was just, the history that I never knew about. Again, as you said, we forget to ask. We we don't we think do. to ask our parents about things like that. We do exactly, and it's and so I, important. Yeah, I'll, I tell everybody nowadays when I talk to, if your parents are around or you got some older relatives around, ask them about the family. Yeah, that's what we need to know. Yes, I like that. Mm -hmm. so, so it's, it makes it rather interesting. It drives me crazy, but uh, it drove me crazy. Let's put it that way. But it was a good crazy. And, Aww. Uh, I think that uh, with, with, with the experience we've had, and both of us are pretty well educated, too, uh, we, could, we can do research quite easily. And like I say, I have friends around the world, too, that uh, I can get in touch with oftentimes to, to help me which makes it a lot better if you're, you know, coming from another country and your family or your family has been here a long time. It's good to be able to follow them too. I'm lucky enough that where I'm at, I got, of course, the library of Congress up in uh, DC, which is about a two hour drive. And in Richmond, I have the uh, library of Virginia, which is uh, a wonderful depository for researching in Virginia. Yeah. Wow. Well, we also, uh, we have uh, just three minutes left in the show, John. What else in particular do you want to share with our listeners today? Well, I, you know, I think what we got to today is just letting them know what we've got to, got to show them and what we've done and what we can do for them uh, is, is the big thing. We just ask that they, uh, when they talk to us, we'll, what we do is we'll, we'll talk to them for a little while and we'll decide what they want to do, and uh, then we'll contract if they want to contract out. It's as simple as that, uh, and that's what they what we do. Uh, what genealogists do will contract and make you a written paper of what we plan to do. Got it. And, uh, and I then, mean, and and to be honest, I mean, you don't know the timeline, right? How long it could take. I mean, some people want immediate results, but sometimes this stuff takes a while. You got to remind it, it them does. of that, right? Yeah, I had I had years ago when I was doing this in the beginning. I had talked and gave some money to uh, pro. I won't say the name of the the organization, but in the company, but to somebody that were professional geologists. To see if they could help me because I, you know, the brick wall that I was having at that time. And the only thing that I ended up doing was paying $900 for a list of my grandfather and his kids, family. Yeah. And, and that was all out of, from Saryan. So uh, I was very, very dissuaded by that. Uh, and I said, I'm going to do my own work. Again, it took time only because of what was available when I started, but uh, nowadays it's a, a little simpler. A lot of people want to do it on their own. They're, I, I tell them go willing, willingly 
go and try. But if you need help, we will help. Aww. And, uh, and it, it depends upon, uh, normally we charge by the hour. It's like being a, a lawyer or any of those things. It's uh, by the minute. Right? I mean, really, we break down the hour. Uh, so uh, because we've got, normally we'll have two or three projects going at a time. Mm-hmm. So it keep, it keeps us dandy. And as we know through my wife, she has her interests from the Ukraine and Poland, so she's good on uh, Eastern Europe, and Aww. she has pretty good uh, relationship with people over there now that we can help her out. It's all we can help a lot of people a lot of ways. Right. Well, thank you so much for being here for joining us, John Goulet. Remind us one more time of the website. Again, the website is uh, www.lookingback.net. Uh, Perfect. Pretty easy. Great. Thank and, you so uh, much. It's up there, and it's, uh, we don't do a lot on there, but we can tell you, we give you a pretty good look at what it what it's there for and what, what we can do for you. Uh, but it's, again, it's, uh, I'd like to, I'm going to be doing work. I think we're gone. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Looking forward to it. And I hope your wife is feeling better soon. Okay. It's been Thank a good you, day. Thank you. Good. Same here. Thank yeah, you. I come. appreciate it. And looking forward to the next time we connect. And uh-huh. to all of bye our bye listeners bye. and viewers, please stay tuned. More of the show is coming up right after the break. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's It's going to be okay.